Hello there, this is Douglas Rumbaugh. Now, as you've probably have noticed in my past couple of videos, I've started using um, DWM, is the window manager that I have going right now. And along with that, I've also started using a lot of the other associated tools, including SLock or SLock, however you want to pronounce that, the associated screen locker. The problem is that the my workstation at the university uses Active Directory, uh, which means that I could not use the standard build of SLock on that machine. It requires a patch that enables uh, PAM support to allow it to actually validate my password because the password's not stored on the local machine. The problem that has arisen as a result of this though is that having applied that patch to my version of SLock, uh, it now no longer works on any of my other computers because those don't use that. So the long and short of it is I need two different builds of SLock. I need one for the, the Active Directory systems and one for my just normal personal computers. Now this is a problem that the whole suckless design philosophy does not handle particularly well, right? Because the programs are not configurable in that way. If I wanted to have both the PAM support and not PAM support, well, the initial solution would be just to maintain two separate builds of the software, one that has the patch applied and one that doesn't. And I don't like that idea. I want to try and keep one build. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make it configurable. My plan, and I have no idea if this is going to work, but I can't imagine it's that hard, is to add a new configuration flag to my build of SLock that allows me to specify whether I want to use the PAM-based authentication or shadow file based authentication and then tweak it so that it has both code paths both the unpatched and the patched code paths and then use that configuration variable to toggle between them so I can use the same build on both. That's the plan. Now to begin with let's take a look at what it is that we're actually working with here. So if you are unfamiliar with SLOCK and DWM and that sort of thing uh, it's the, they're what's called suckless, as in software that sucks less. It's kind of a, kind of a hokey name. I'm not a big fan of it, but not a big fan of the name, but I do like the, the software. It's kind of a meme -y, but it does work pretty well for me because I'm a C programmer already. So just having code that's very easily modifiable and whatnot to make it do what I want works pretty well. Now the way that it work, the way this stuff works is you configure it by editing the source code itself. So there's actually a header file in which you write the configuration in C code. So what that ends up becoming is the different configuration options are global variables within the program, and you can set them to whatever values you like, depending upon the obviously how the thing works. But it's all just set in global variables, and then you recompile the software with those new global variables. Uh, if you want to do something a little beyond just changing some options and you want to add functionality, the way that's done is with patches. So if we take a look and I've gone ahead and downloaded a copy of this patch that I want to work with here, uh, the new features that you can add into your build of the software are just a diff file. So it basically tells you for each, for each file that's altered, in this case we're altering the configuration here, you can see that's the file name. We change the configuration. This is the build configuration for make. And then the rest of this is the actual um, SLOC source code itself. It just tells you what to change. So add a line here, take away this line, add this line, and so on. And the actual application of this patch is an automated process to an extent. It doesn't always work out that way, especially once you have many of them. But that's the, that's the theory. So this is the patch that I've applied to enable PAM support. So with this patch applied, SLOC works on the work computers. And without this patch, it works on my personal computers. Our goal is to make it work in both, both cases. So I don't much care about the changes to the configuration because uh, I want those to stick irrespective of what we do. All the changes we're going to make are to the actual um, slock.c file itself. So let's just take a quick look at what actually changed in here. 
because it's not that much. So we don't have, theoretically, a whole hell of a lot of work to do here. Um, this stuff here is the, are the changes basically at the top of the file, so you can see added some extra libraries, uh, forward declaration of a function, and a struct. And then here we have created a password global variable and change the enumeration. So nothing up there needs to change. And here we have a function definition, which again, we don't have to touch because you know we just won't use it if we don't want it. So I'm not gonna do anything fancy there. What ultimately ends up needing to change is maybe this, I don't know. I'll have to take a look at this get hash function. But this is the meat of it this uh, read password function. So this is where the majority of the, the changes were made and where we'll probably have to do the most work to get this thing working together. And then we just have a little if statement that was deleted out of the main function. Okay, so let's just start with this, uh, getting this read password thing put together. So first things first, as you can see, we have some changes in the in the variables that are defined inside the Function. And in fact, let me go ahead and just go here in the source code. Here we go. So this is the this is in the source file the stuff that corresponds to the these changes. So as you can see, in the cyclist coding style guide there's some rules for how you're supposed to write this code. And one of the rules is forward declarations of every variable that's used in the function. I think it's a stupid rule. I think it's very antiquated and outdated, but that's the way it's written. So that's the way we'll keep it. Now, one of the reasons why this is particularly stupid in this context, and I, I don't mean that in a, I, I probably, that probably sounds more aggressive than I mean it. I, in my opinion, this is not the best design decision to make for this particular kind of software, especially because it creates a lot of contention when you're patching. All of the, you know, if all, all of the patches that change read password, for example, are going to edit these lines as they add and remove variables, which means all of the patches that add variables are going to conflict because they'll be editing the same line. And when the patches conflict, you can't automatically apply them. You have to go in and manually intervene. If these variables were simply declared as they were needed further down in the function, you would not have that contention and a lot of patching failures would not happen. So this decision to forward declare everything actually makes patching harder, or not harder, but requires more manual interventions. Um, I've always been a fan of minimizing the scope of variables as much as possible, but in any case, here we can see what the differences are. So if we look here, we've added some stuff. So we've added this pam variable here. We've added retval here. Uh, you can see when a line is edited, it's represented in the diff by deleting the original. So this is what it originally looked like. And then here is the new one where they added this retval variable to it. So we, or rather, yeah, they added retval. So we won't have to do anything there, right? Num screen running failure, yeah. Uh, so the only thing we have, really have to account for here is we have deleted password 256 and input hash. Now actually, they didn't get rid of password 256. If we scroll on up, you can see they, they made it into a global. So we'll leave that, but we are gonna have to put this star input hash back. So let's go ahead and do that. like so. And then I think everything else should be good here. We don't have to change anything else. All right. And then the rest of the stuff that they changed in here happens in uh, the case. Yeah. Right here, a lot of stuff get, got changed. And actually, as you can see, <laughs> the code that's in the file is actually different from the code that's in the patch because I've already tweaked it once to, to change something else. But that's fine. I just got rid of this X window stuff and call a different function there instead. It's effectively the same thing. So before we get too deep into this, let's actually create this configuration variable. Uh, what shall we call it? Uh, 
Let's call it uh, use Pam. So there we go. If it's zero, then we use Pam. Or if it's zero, we don't use Pam. If it's one, we do. So then here, take a look. That stuff stays. And then I think everything else changes. Right? Yeah, pretty much everything else changes. So if not use Pam, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do it this way. If use Pam, we do this stuff down to, let's see, where's a break? If running. So from there to there, this is the code that was actually added by the patch. So if use Pam, we want to do that. Else we want to use whatever the original thing was that was in this spot. And then, yes, okay. So what originally went here, And if running, blah, blah. Okay, great. So theoretically, that should do that. So all I've done is taken all of the code that the patch added and threw it inside of this if branch, this branch from the if statement. So if use Pam is true, we do all that stuff else. And then I reconstituted the original missing code, or the code that was originally deleted there. And do you not like about that? No, oh, that's fine. All right, so that's good. Then let's take a look up here and get hash. So, here we go. So Pam store username. So this is going to be an if use Pam case again. And roll on down to main. Looking for don't kill me. Down here. So hash get hash error now. And then we'll put this back. If not use Pam and not crypt. Okay, so in theory, that should now work. Let's test it out. I'll have built. And it worked, look at that. Now, obviously I, I don't have the, I'll have to test to verify that the PAM side of things still works on the other end as well, although I, I don't see why it wouldn't. So there you go. That was just a quick little, quick little video tweaking my screen locker. Figured I'd bring you along for the ride. I'm finding that I quite enjoy this, uh, this cyclist software for this reason. Um, it, it, there's just something very fulfilling about actually going in and tweaking the code and kind of building your own stuff into uh, programs that you're just actually using, you know, instead of just little toy programs or whatever, but actual desktop stuff like this. Um, I've made quite a few tweaks to a variety of different things along those lines. It's quite fun. Anywho, that is all that I have for this one. So just a quick little quick little programming thing. I don't know, hope you found this vaguely interesting and I'll see you in the next one.